Hey guys, it's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome to another review. This is a uh, the, the month of May. Welcome to the month of May. We're finally in May. Uh, Multiverse of Madness is just a couple of days away. I can't wait to see it. Uh, this is another movie that's just completely off its rocker. But this is this month is going to be What Just Happened Month. Yeah, the films I see, most of them, whether it's good or bad, I'm going to explain what just happened. Like if I can't, if I could do it the best of my ability. This is a 2021 movie that came out last year, directed by Justin Lin. Yeah, he's done with this franchise now. I'm glad because this franchise, it went downhill ever since Paul Walker died in 2013. Yeah, screenplay. What what screenplay? This was written by Monkeys. It's a sequel to Fate of the Furious, serving as the ninth main installment and the tenth full in this franchise. It stars these people, and it is F9, the Fast Saga. What saga? What the hell just happened in this movie? When did this go from racing with cars to freaking espionage, freaking Mission Impossible type shit? Well, when did that? When did that happen? When did that happen? Tell me. When did that happen, guys? You went from normal folks that are that bleed, that are vulnerable, normal characters mostly in the first like four films, and they now they're superheroes. They don't get a scratch on them. There's all this meta humor that is trying to be like Deadpool. And there's worthless cameos you don't need in this freaking movie. This is not a movie. This is an endurance test. I know why Josh was so in, uh, you know frustrated when he saw this movie last year. And I saw the theatrical version. The, the extended version is only seven minutes longer. I don't think I can get through it because this was insane. This is the plot and this is the short version. In this film, Toretto and the, and the team come together to stop a world-shattering plot headed by his younger brother, Jacob, played by John Cena. Where the hell was his brother mentioned? He was never mentioned in the first couple of films when uh, you know uh, Paul Walker was alive. He was never mentioned in Tokyo Drift or Hobbs and Shaw. No, this just came out of nowhere. The only reason John Cena did this movie is because The Rock didn't want to work with Vin Diesel anymore. That's the only reason they put another wrestler in here. Cena's a good actor. Just don't think that he was right for this role the whole time. He's, he's he's talking like this. No charm. No no sense of humor. No. The only ones with a sense of humor in this movie are the uh, you know a uh, Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris, and that dumbass Danish actor that says yeah some of the most cringe dialogue you'll ever hear. And this movie has the same problem that the last Matrix movie has. It's winking at the audience. Again. This is not the genre for that. These aren't like the 21 the 21 Jump Street movies, 21 and 22 Jump Street where they're meant to be self-aware parodies of the TV show because the TV show was dead serious and the and the movies are funny. This isn't a comedy, guys. You don't need the yucky the yuck yuck in this crazy ass freaking bipolar movie. This movie doesn't know what it wants to be. It is 2 hours and 23 minutes. Good God, that's almost as long as The Eternals. The Eternals was way worse, because that movie, I was bored out of my mind. With this one, there's a lot happening, but that's the problem. There's too much happening. Once you get to the 20-minute mark, and they go to Montenegro, and, and the freaking car jumps over the bridge, it lost me. I'm like, what the fuck is this movie? The car swinging from a freaking vine like it's Tarzan. That makes no sense, and that defies all... There's no laws of physics here. It doesn't make any freaking sense. This movie cost $225 million. Yeah, so did that movie right over there, Infinity War. So did that movie You're right behind me, uh, the, the Avengers Endgame. So did other movies like like freaking uh, the, the first Avengers and, and Guardians of the Galaxy. This did not look like a $200 million movie. Where did the money go? Where? Universal, answer me. And the COVID, I'm glad it pushed this movie because this movie I wish was never made in the first place. I wish they stopped after Furious 7. It was a great send-off for Paul Walker. He didn't need to be replaced by other actors. That's the thing. They haven't found a replacement. It wasn't Scott Eastwood in the eighth movie. It wasn't Charlize Theron. It wasn't uh, freaking, you know, uh, Yuckety Yuck Yuck uh, Lucas Black in the in the, in the the uh, you know the third movie. What, what Where the hell did this franchise go? What happened here? Because look at this. Ninth film was planned since 2014. Yeah, the year after Paul Walker died. So fuck you, Universal, for that dumbass thing. Lynn was confirmed as a director in October 2017 after he did Fast uh, Seven. Uh, so, no, he did Fast Six. Excuse me, and and uh, and the Fate of the Furious. No, no, he didn't do Fate of the Furious. That was uh, F. Gary Gray. 
Um, but after he did six, six should have been the last. I would have been happy if six or seven were the last ones. I don't need any more of this. And this, it's about family. I don't take her back on my family. I've uh, we get it, Vin Diesel, and I don't care about your stupid cross insignias. I told you, I don't want to see that in my films anymore. Granted, that's the least of this movie's problems, but that's just a personal take of mine. Stop with the damn crosses already. We get it already. We get it. For fuck's sake. Anyway, yeah. The, you know, if F9 is the first film in the franchise since the fa fa Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, not written by Chris Morgan. Oh, it definitely shows. Chris Morgan is a writer. He's not on crack and, and has two other dumbass writers writing a script for him. What else did Chris Morgan do? He's 51 years old. He's done better movies than this. Even Fast and the Furious 4. That's the worst one with Paul Walker because of the bad CGI cars and the lame ass villain and there and Brian and and, uh, and and Adam are fighting each other throughout most of it. But at least that movie they were human. Here they're superheroes. Vin Diesel gets hit in the freaking head with a with a with a with a pavement like in a house. He hits his head on the roof. No blood. No concussion. No head trauma. He's just like oh. I'm the Hulk. And they're jumping out of windows. There's, they don't get cut. And don't say it's a PG-13. The Batman had blood in it. It was not a kid's movie. This movie, there is no excuse. Yeah, he wrote Cellular. That's a better movie. Tokyo Drift. That's decent. Wanted. Didn't like the ending, but some of the action was less crazy than this shit. Fast and the Furious 4. Yeah, again, I said my problems with that one. Fast 5. That's much better than this one. Fast 6. 47 Ronin. No. And Furious 7. This guy's a hit and miss writer, but he's a lot better. He's writing the new Shazam. He just wrote Shazam Fury of the Gods. That's got to be better than this bullshit. He's also writing the Hobbs and Shaw sequel, which I don't care about. I love The Rock and I love Jason Statham. I don't give a shit about Vanessa Kirby. I told you that since Mission Impossible Fallout. And these movies are trying to be Mission Impossible. They got a villain with this super high-tech freaking like jet, uh, invisible jet like in Wonder Woman 84. And they're trying to use these bombs or whatever to try to blow, you know, blow shit up. And I'm like, that's from Mission Impossible Fallout. Or any of the Mission Impossibles where there's a life-threatening, you know, missile or a freaking bomb or something. Why are you copying that? The rest of the cast was finalized, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and... Principal photography began the same month that it lasted the day until November while filming locations in London, Los Angeles, T Tbilisi, and Thailand. Yeah, there's so many locations in this movie that I'm like, I lost track of the, where the film was. One minute they're in Montenegro, the next they're in London, the next they're in freaking, uh, uh, you know, Ca uh, California or whatever. It's too much. Like, there's too many locations in this movie. You're not a Star Wars movie. You don't need to go to a new location every five minutes like The Last Jedi or, or The Rise of Skywalker. Do one thing. It's like this movie was made for people with ADHD. And I, I have that, but I'm like, good God, this movie just, it's a cartoon. This is a cartoon. This is not an action movie. The Batman was more of an action movie. And so was Thor. And so was freaking the last uh, Ghostbusters movie. That made more freaking sense than this. It wasn't two hours and 20 minutes of catching ghosts and just doing crazy shit. That doesn't happen until the third act. Here, it just makes no freaking sense. So, uh, not Sony, Universal, stop making these movies over two hours. There's a lot of flashbacks that could have been cut out. There's a lot of these freaking, uh, putting, you know, stock footage of the sixth movie in the, reinserting it into the movie to try to make it feel, uh, co coherent. It didn't work for me. Gal's not in this movie. That was all stock footage from the sixth movie. Even she said, fuck these movies after the, they killed off her character off screen in, in Fast Six. These movies are cartoons now. Cars are almost indestructible. They can freaking f fly in the air, s hit the, hit a pavement and never t br break or explode. Or they can just go over bridges without freaking flying thing. They can fly into space. They can freaking flip over. It's ridiculous. This is a freaking cartoon. People can jump on vehicles without breaking any bones. It's bullshit. I can only suspend my disbelief for so much. And this movie made $726.5 million. Shame on you overseas people. Shame. You don't have any freaking taste. And it said, yeah, the the with an estimated production budget of $225 million, I did not see that on screen. For this cartoon, yeah, get the fuck out of here. It's one of the most expensive films ever made. I wish it wasn't. Titanic was more subtle than this because that movie didn't need to, like, blow up the Titanic. That would have been stupid and inaccurate. That doesn't happen until the almost three-hour mark, but at least the movie was consistent. 
F9 was originally scheduled for a worldwide release on April 19, 2019. But it was delayed several times. Good. Because first was because of Hobbs and Shaw, which was bullshit. I don't want to see that. And planned re release of Eon's production is No Time to Die, which is the last Bond movie. That can't be any worse than this. Why? Because that's one character, not 45. It premiered in South Korea, and then it was pushed because of COVID. Again, I wish COVID had pushed this movie for a decade. But, you know, it was released internationally in May 19th, 2021. So almost a year ago. It then was released in the UK, who cares, in the US, June 25th. The film got mixed reviews. Mixed reviews. This is not a Justin Lin movie. I've seen his other films. I saw Star Trek Beyond. It wasn't as crazy as this. I saw Fast 6. I saw that. He's a good director. He even produced an episodes of The Endgame on, on NBC. It's not like this. It's not a cartoon. The only cartoonish thing in that is is Marina Baccarin's accent. Here, there's like 15 accents in this movie. And no offense, Josh, I know... But there's the, the, the guy with the southern accent in this movie, he sounds like he's a freaking hillbilly. Again, no disrespect to you, Josh. No disrespect at all. But Lucas Black did not sound this southern in, in Tokyo Drift. Here, he's like a freaking hillbilly. He's like, I got my I got my pollen slices over there. I'm like, oh, my God. And that's the first of 17 different accents. He has a southern accent, and then an Asian girl has a New Zealand accent, and then you have the Binto from Fast 5, 6, and 7, who we don't give a shit about, and then we have the, uh, who else? You have the, the, the Bad Bunny and, and Mickey, Nicki Minaj. I mean, not Nicki Minaj. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, freaking Cardi B is in this movie in a cameo. Why is she in this freaking movie? Why? What was the freaking point of this? We didn't need this. They they praised it for the stunts. Yeah, the stunts and the action when they're not a freaking cartoon, it's well done. It's well shot. You can see it. It's not shaky cam. I give that credit for the for the technical aspects. Lynn's direction for some of the people that act normal in this movie, like Jordana Brewster, who is barely in the freaking movie. Helen Mirren is in one scene. Kurt Russell is in one scene. Yet we get cameos from these worthless fucking reggaeton artists like Don Omaro and, and Bad Bunny and freaking Party B. Why do we have these people on, on screen? Oh, because they're famous singers. They can't act. Period. Fuck that El Muerto movie that's going to come out on Sony. You, you cast Bad Bunny, who's not an actor... As the freaking at a freaking Marvel character, yeah, screw you. That movie's gonna suck. It got criticisms for its unrealistic action scenes. Uh, yeah, because the cars can do anything in this movie. They can literally do anything. They can fly. They can flip over and not blow up. They can go over, over bridges. They people can crash on them and not break a bone or get cut or anything. John Cena is zip lining through a city, and Vin Diesel spears him like the like 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 Edge or like Goldberg or something or Roman Reigns through a glass. No blood. It's just, it's a freaking cartoon. It is a several pandemic, bro it, bro it broke broke records. Yeah, I don't care. Fast 10, I don't even want, if it's like this, I'm going to walk out if I see this in the theater because this movie was a cartoon and Justin Lin, I don't, I don't blame him for leaving. Trust me. That was the best decision he made after this bullshit. Yeah. And it didn't make a lot of money in the US. It only made 173 million. That's a little bit. Sonic 2 is already making more than that. Because it's it's not this it's not a cartoon. Jim Carrey is cartoonish, but it works for that movie. Here, it doesn't work. And I don't understand what people see in this in, in these last three films. What these stupid critics feel. At least the critics are wising up and saying that this is bullshit. Yeah, look at the consensus. Let me rerun tomatoes. This got way too high of a percentage. Five fifty nine percent. It's one percentage short of being fresh. F9 sends the franchise hurtling further over the top than ever. Over the top. No, this is way over the top. This is a freaking movie that was with somebody that clearly has never has taken so many drugs that they, they their brains are, are freaking fried. Yeah. But director Justin Lin's knack for preposterous set pieces keeps the action humming. Yeah. I will say this. It's not boring. But there's a lot of stuff that could have been cut out of here. All the things that I mentioned. All these worthless cameos. The flashbacks. One flashback. That's all we needed. Domin and his brother have their father dies in a car accident. That's it. That's all the tension you needed. You didn't need to go back to that all the way. Even in the end credits, like before the end credits, they show a flashback with an actor that looks nothing like Vin Diesel. And I would not recommend this movie. If you've seen the other films, stick with the first seven films. Don't even bother with this one. This movie is a freaking cartoon.
Yeah, and even look what look what this guy said. Uh, Matt Patches of Polygon criticized the film for its lack of characterization. There's like 35 characters in this movie. You don't have enough time or freaking budget to to, to you know or writers. You you don't have a competent writer to write 35 character personalities. It's like like I said, there's people with 15 accents in this movie. After 20 years of fast films, Dom is a total functional blockbuster superhero. Yeah, he's not supposed to be a superhero. They're supposed to be normal people that race, not flying through freaking bridges and shit. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it lost me. And they did this after Paul Walker died, which is insulting to me. Dom is so, uh, yeah, and, and that Fast 9 counteracts any character development by devoting a great, grading amount of time to meta commentary on this ridiculousness. Yeah, and winking at saying we survived this and that, and I don't have a scratch or a scar to sew for it. I'm like, yeah, because the writers think that being meta is, is, is clever. It worked in Deadpool because Deadpool's a comedy, guys. It's an action superhero comedy. He is a superhero. A anti-hero. But he's not... He, when he cut his hand off, that ha actually happened. It wasn't like he, he he grew his hand back in two seconds. Or when he gets shot, uh, when he gets uh, stabbed in the head with a, with a knife. It's not like he just pulls it out cartoonish. No, he bleeds. These people don't bleed. They're freaking... Car they're, they're superheroes. And it pisses me off. We already got superheroes in the MCU and the DCU. We got superheroes. We don't need any more. Furious Seven was a lot more fun, yeah, because Furious Seven, while there was, while it was ridiculous, and they did, they were like dropping cars into the sky and, and driving through buildings. That was that was normal compared to the shit in this movie. And this movie is. It says this movie that slingshot so far past self parody that it loops all the way back to something real. It's ridiculous. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. They're like, not even a pandemic could stop us. Yeah, you know, bad, bad box office is going to stop you next time. I mean, they, when they by the time they got into space without space helmets, by the way, they were using freaking deep, deep sea diving suits. And I'm like, yeah, this is stupid. This is ridiculous. And the, and the jokes did not work for me. This uh, this uh, Danish guy, I don't know what his name is. Uh, you know, Theo something. Uh, I don't know. His name was Otto in the movie. He does, he does like five Star Wars references in like five minutes. Oh, I wanted you to get everybody on it, and that's including the Millennium Falcon and Han Solo and Han Solo and Chewbacca and everybody. And then he's like, "I'm freaking Luke Skywalker," and I'm like, "Oh my god, this dialogue is freaking horrible." This is like Batman and Robin territory. Seriously, guys, Justin Lin is not a bad director because I've seen his movies. Star Trek Beyond was not winking at the camera every two seconds. And Charlize Theron, I normally hate her in films. She doesn't have anything to do in this until the very end. Michael Rooker is wasted here. John Cena, he tries his best, but he just doesn't work as a villain because I didn't buy it. Michelle Rodriguez, she's also a superhero. Jumping out of windows like Bat like Catwoman. No blood, nothing. Uh, you know, the, the British girl, fuck her. I already told you I don't like Bintos, but there's like 14 people in this movie. I have an accent or 15. Sun King, why is Han alive? Because plot convenience. Oh, uh, Kurt Russell did a freaking hologram and he he saved them. No, he didn't. You just want to have plot convenience up the ass. These people are superheroes. Yeah, Lucas Black Bow Wow was in the movie wearing a freaking self-aware hat. But it would have been fun if this was more like Space Jam 2. Shorter, and it's a comedy. It's not meant to be taken seriously. This movie is supposed to be taken seriously, and they're driving over bridges. It's freaking mental. Justin Lin, I'm not going to say it was his fault, because he just he directed the movie, and he was one of, the, of three writers. You, you don't need three writers for a Fast and the Furious movie. You only need one one damn writer, not three or four or five or six. One, one, one. You don't need four. And this movie is just insane. It's absolutely insane. There is no plot. This is like the Transformer sequels. The more shit that happens, the more it doesn't make any freaking sense. This needed to be two hours even, or an hour and 45 minutes, or an hour and 50 minutes. The original Fast and the Furious was not like this. They were not superheroes. The movie was under two hours. They were talking like normal people. They weren't winking at the camera like Deadpool. It's stupid. Expendables 2 was less cringe than this. And that wasn't two and a half hours. This franchise just needs to end. After Fast 10 and 11, don't reboot this. Just leave it dead. It should have stayed dead after Furious 7. But whatever. These movies are just ridiculous. Don't see Fast 9, the, the, the Fast Saga. It's not a saga. 
They pulled that out of their ass because every movie it wants to be a saga now. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this bullshit. This movie is incoherent. It's a mess. It's overstuffed. There's too many characters. We have characters popping out of nowhere from other films just to say, hey, remember those people from the movies? Yes, I do. But you, you don't need this movie. It's not needed. It's too freaking long. This is like Eternals, but with three times as many people. And with 15 accents at a time. Just stop already. Stop it already. Please. Good God. These movies are getting more expensive and more freaking stupid and longer. And I'm tired of it. I don't care how successful they are. I don't. Because like I said, I was tired. I have some of the films on Blu-ray. But it doesn't mean I want to revisit this movie. This one you can skip. Yeah, Thu Ersted Rasmussen is Otto. He was not needed in the film. You could have cut him out. Anna Sawal is Ellie. You could have cut her out. Cardi B, you could have cut her out. The freaking reggaeton singers. Or Charlize Theron. If you're not going to give him anything to do, just cut them out of the movie. This movie is bullshit. It's a freaking travesty. I'm glad I skipped this in the theater. It didn't deserve my money. I, I watched it on HBO Max. And I will never watch it again all the way through. It's too freaking long. The Batman felt less less like a chore to get through than this. And that was a longer movie. But it's an epic. This is not an epic. This is a freaking cartoon. And it sucks. If you didn't think, know that before, it sucks. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. And I don't know what else to say, but screw Fast 9. It's, it's a freaking disaster. See you guys in the next one.